education, health and the elderly, all the usual suspects of an election campaign. But this time there's a new topic taking over the ACT election policies, active transport. ACT Labor and the Greens, as well as the Canberra Liberals, have all pledged their alliance to a healthier and more active ACT. The three major parties have all announced policies centred around getting people out of cars and onto bikes. Whilst active transport seems like a peripheral issue, it has so many different impacts on all these other areas of government work and particularly in real high cost areas like education and health. I mean, if we can get our children healthier, if we can get our city better connected, it's going to have much more positive impacts on those other big ticket areas. While Canberra's livability and health indicators compare favourably with other jurisdictions, there's still a heavy reliance on car-based travel. The Greens have appointed themselves as the leaders in active transport policies and say the other parties are now catching up. We've announced our policy already to improve cycling infrastructure, to improve pedestrian safety and it's great that you know, the other parties have now seen that's something they need to invest in but frankly our policy is the best one. I think all parties recognise we've got to do more to get more people on bikes and walking around the city but it's priorities within that which would differentiate. And differentiate they have. ACT Labor's priority is an off-road cycle lane along Madura Parkway as well as extra funding aimed at getting more children on their bikes. The Canberra Liberals haven't shied away from the topic either. They're proposing a range of commitments to cycling, including supporting the Civic Cycle Loop, getting more bikes onto buses and a bike path along Horsepark Drive. What we're proposing is either a segregated bike path or, a, um, or an on-road bike path along Horse Park Drive um, that is distinct to a cycle highway. Um, we think the, um, the proposal that we have is reasonable and one that will attract more people to cycling. Brendan Nerdle from cycling advocacy group Pedal Power says physically separated cycle paths are considered most important to Canberra cyclists. While the three parties have all focused on off-road cycling, the Greens are the only party to include separated cycle lanes in their policy. People think that physically separated cycle paths in general are the key bit of infrastructure that would really attract more people out of their cars. The Greens say projections from the current government indicate active transport funding will be reduced from four to one million dollars if re-elected in October. Their aim is to keep funding at its current level. That is the big difference between our active transport policy and the other parties is we will actually put real resources into cycling and pedestrian infrastructure. However, so far the Greens have only committed money towards the design of their cycle superhighway because, as Lakuta has admitted, they don't know what it's going to cost. When governments do this they take the credit for an announcement but they actually haven't made the hard decision to, to um, spend the money to build it. Lakuta maintains the superhighway will be revolutionary for people who live out of New Malongolo suburbs and is well and truly worth the estimated $10 million price tag. Pedal Power's Brendan Nerdle agrees. The idea is transformative and in cycling and promoting cycling, getting more people on bikes, you need to have transformative infrastructure. Also the time's right to build it because we're building three new suburbs uh, in the Malongolo Valley. Canberra is currently in the process of designing living spaces for now and into the future. The Greens Cycle Superhighway would connect new Malongolo suburbs to the city. In 2010, the Mercer Worldwide Quality of Living Survey rated Canberra as the 26th most livable city in the world, ahead of places like San Francisco, Paris, London and New York. If Canberra wants to continue competing with the best of them, Brendan says leaders need to ensure they focus on the big picture. The types of infrastructure, whether they be footpaths, on-road cycle lanes, physically separated cycle lanes or cycling superhighways are in many ways a secondary uh, element to that. It's the full network that's most important. With all parties committed to a healthier and more active ACT this election, Pedal Power and other active transport groups can be hopeful that a full network of active transport options will continue to be developed. I'm Jaleesa Apps reporting alongside Jackie Garrity for Next Act on Crikey.